Uh, my name is Joy Candy. I am a fashion and lifestyle content creator in Nairobi. I would describe myself as a creative. Um, I am somebody who genuinely just enjoys life, um, every single aspect of life. And I think um, as I've gotten older, I've kind of just evolved who I am in general. So right now I'm just more of a person who's very focused on her future, her goals, and she's just a hustler to try to make sure that she achieves those goals. She is a boss babe. <laughs> uh, when I first started off content creation, we used to do blogging. So when we first started off, this was over 10 years ago, it was like me, Sharon, when she had her blog, This Is Us, Sylvia and Jackie, um, Nancy Moy, when she had her page. So we were one of the few that started around the same time. And when we first started off, it was 100% a hobby. We just kind of enjoyed, or at least for me, it, I really just enjoyed sharing um, fashion and beauty content. I just like to show people how to shop, how to dress, at least according to my aesthetic. Um, and the biggest part of why I started doing um, blogging at the time was to teach people how to shop and style themselves on a budget because I was in college at the time, extraordinarily broke. So I started off with how to shop at Gikomba, Toy Market, Ngara, basically how to shop on a budget and it just slowly evolved from there. I don't know if my style has changed. I gotta be honest, I think <laughs> my bank account has changed. And I feel like a lot of people don't usually tend to understand that. Like a lot of our styles usually, you kind of still are have the same aesthetic as you did when you were 20. It's just more um, cleaned up. Um, there's more of a little bit of a purpose to why you wear certain pieces and the pieces that you wear are higher quality. Not that you can't get amazing quality in se uh, second hand, which I do all the time, but all your pieces are, are put together in a lot more cohesive way. And you don't follow trends, you just follow your personal style, so yeah. So for me, when it comes to fashion and trends, I do believe in trends in a way where they can inspire your personal style, but I don't believe in the concept of just wearing something just because it's trendy, because trendy is one of those things that's flaky. It will, it will come by lunchtime tomorrow, that trend is over. But you can use what's trending as a way to evolve your personal style. And there's a very huge difference between style and trends. So your style is just what you love and you can use trends as a way to evolve what you personally love when it comes to your personal style. So my, my hair evolution has basically gone from weaves where I used to do this um, Cassie C, I don't know, the Cassie slash Rihanna half shaven hair. And then, so I had to shave my whole head because half my head was shaved. And then I looked nice, bald, so that I was just like, okay let's keep short hair then i bleached it i started wearing wigs and i really love it but i would never i don't think i'm ever planning to grow my hair back because i love the flexibility where one day i'm a little blonde baddie with like a little wait, blonde bald baddie and then another day i have like hair all the way down to like there and then blonde hair another day so i kind of like the flexibility of being able to just do whatever i want so i'm never gonna grow my hair back up never striking a balance between being a public figure and also being able to keep your privacy i feel like it's just something that you have to i make it a point to not talk about my personal life if i do not give you anything to talk about you would not care so for me i just don't share things that i don't feel that thousands of random people should be aware of personally for me. Okay, acting. I have not been on a TV show since I had hair. <laughs> so that's like over eight years ago. Um, I don't know, I think I just kind of stayed more in the content creation life and I just kind of just decided to evolve there. Um, it's not something that I'm completely 100% against. I think I'm just more scared to get back into it because what if I suck? <laughs> yeah, but I don't know. So I'm not 100% I'm not sure if I'll get back into it, but I, it's not something that has been crossed off my list as a never again. Okay, so when it comes to the whole content creation versus influencer aspect, I like to call myself more of a content creator more than an influencer. Um, number one, because of the level of production that it takes for me to create the work that I do. There's a lot of work, like it'll be a 15 second video that takes like 10 hours 
to shoot and create. So, and, com and for me, I shoot and edit most, like 98% of all my content. So that's why I consider myself more of a content creator. Now, I do consider myself a content creator, but I do use that aspect of my life to be an influencer, but being an influencer is not my goal. I don't know if that makes sense. Versus I feel like when you're strictly just an influencer, uh, you have a little bit more flexibility to just be like, I mean, I don't use it, but why not? Let me just push it type of aesthetic, so yeah. So when it comes to colorism, colorism is a thing that's just generally in the black community, whether it's in Africa, whether it's in the black community in Europe, the US, South America, it doesn't really matter. Colorism does exist. And if somebody says that they don't believe that colorism does not exist, they just need to open their eyes a little bit more. Now, it affects life differently. Now, let's just start off with just work, with what I do. Um, when I first started off, being a content creator um one of my most like shocking moments was um, a brand had hired me to do something that had to do with skincare um i don't work with this brand at all and after this incident i was just like i'm not even going to do the post it's okay i'll bow out is because um i shot the content i sent it i sent it to them to approve and they're like no we love the content but can you make yourself lighter and i was like but it's skincare they're like no yeah but the client would like you to look lighter in in the photos and in the video and i remember being like so you want me to be three shades light, but that's not what I look like. But you're trying to pre uh, create a product that is supposed to target the black woman. But me in my skin tone is not good enough for you. So how are you expecting to take money from women who look like me and who are darker than me, which is shifty on its own? Um, I've dealt with that a couple of times. Uh, when it comes to the content creation aspect now, I personally have not dealt with it now because you know who I am when you hire me. And I'm in that skin tone in the middle where I don't experience it that much. But I am very aware, very aware that it exists. And I am very aware that there are so many, so many incredibly talented, one of like gorgeous dark skinned women who are just not given even half the opportunity that the lighter skinned counterparts are given. And I can tell majority of the time is because the brand wants somebody who's slightly lighter. And it's something that if, it's a worldwide thing. And I, I believe that if the more that people are aware of it, the more the system is gonna change, both in like society itself and also in the work industry, yeah. It's really hard for me to name names of content creators that I really love because I follow a ton of content creators, but I remember them by their Instagram handles and half the time I can never remember their Instagram handles to save my life. So I usually see that I'm like, ah, I love this chick so much. Oh, I love this guy so much, but I cannot remember their names to save my life right now. To me, what makes a content cre uh, a good content creator is somebody who is number one, um, creative. Number two, somebody who understands the business and also the, pro the process of creating content. And number three, being able to create content about anything because i feel like that's a huge thing when it comes to content creation um being able to do whatever you generally love whether it's fashion beauty hair whatever but if a brand hits you up and they deal with cameras can you push that camera if they give you soap can you push that soap in a way that is not so obvious i have i'm very superstitious so i never ever ever talk about what I am doing in the future. Because in my head, I, I do believe that there are some people in this world who are looking at you like, who are waiting for you to slip. And if you talk about, oh, my plan is blah, 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 blah. I want to do this in three years. Oh, but there's always going to be somebody who's going to have bad energy towards it. So I, I am a firm believer of keep on guessing. Don't tell, no, don't tell nobody. Trust nobody except like your very close friends and your family. Not everybody is here for you. So don't tell everybody your business, what your goals are. Just be quiet and do your things and then surprise them. <laughs>